Welcome back to the 12th episode of the Chaos Profile. In the previous episode, I ended things off as an IMM player yet again, and I also ended up spinning one item rarity, further locking my gameplay to very specific activities. Luckily for me, I still hadn't worked on my Heart of the Mountain skill yet, so I took this opportunity to head to the Dwarven Mines and I got to work on some commissions. The lobby I swapped to also ended up having an active raffle, so I ran around for a bit and collected a few tickets for a chance to win some extra powder and mining XP. Gimme, 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 gimme. That's enough for me. Okay, who's gonna win, guys? Who's gonna win? Certainly not me, because I have, like, no ticket entries. <gasps> no! I'll spin, I'll spin, I'll spin, I'll spin. GG's, guys, GG's. I got 9k mining XP, Heart of the Mountain XP, Mithril Powder. I'm so good, bro. Alright, this can't get worse, right? This can't get worse. Hey, let's go! Yes, 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 yes. That's actually huge, that's huge, that's huge. So if you haven't been following the series or you've just forgotten, I already had the Clean Tools modifier enabled due to landing on it in the previous episode. Because I spun the wheel and landed on it again though, this disabled the modifier at the perfect time, because since I just got started with mining, I can now complete all my commissions with my regular Enchanted Diamond Pickaxe, and not this silly clean one that I had just for the time being. Okay, we're back boys, with an Enchanted Pickaxe this time. Good. Now, I can mine Mithril, right? When do I- when do I get to use this one? No, Breaking Power 5? Breaking Power 4? I need this. Don't have enough coins. It's uncommon as well. Alright guys, I have a Fractured Mithril Pickaxe. Do I want to enchant this thing? I think I do, right? That's all I need, right? I don't need anything else. I mean, I- <sighs> Fortune is kind of pointless. I'ma hold on to my XP bottles for now. Have I spoken to you before? I have not. Oh my god, this is so slow, bro. I'm so used to, like, <laughs> 1,500 mining speed. And now I'm stuck with this garbage. Oh, this sucks. This actually sucks. So now I had a usual mining setup to complete some simple commissions. Albeit, it was a little bit too slow for my liking. The plan from here was to just complete the daily commissions for the boosted Heart of the Mountain XP to put myself just that extra bit closer to Heart of the Mountain 7. A double powder event also occurred in my lobby, so I took the opportunity to complete the puzzler and fetch a quest for the day, because apparently the double powder event actually affects their rewards. While this is all going on, I'll also mention that every Heart of the Mountain level up I get will count towards a spin, and every commission milestone I achieve is also a spin, so leveling my Heart of the Mountain actually has quite a few opportunities to shift up the modifier list. Nonetheless, this grind was pretty quick, and after a little bit of work, I was ready to cash in the rewards of the last daily commission. Hello, hello, hello. Give me my things. Sheesh. All right, the dailies have been done. How close am I? Wait, I'm already... Oh my god, I'm Heart of the Mountain too. Wait, isn't there like a cool level up thing that shows though? Cheeky little spin, bro, for Heart of the Mountain 2. Uh, do that. All right, Heart of the Mountain 2 spin. What's it gonna be? Hey, let's go. Let's go. Remove one modifier. Well, what do I want to remove, bro? I know, I'm getting rid of one item rarity. I, there's not even a choice here, yep. One item rarity's gone, one item rarity's gone. Screw that garbage, bro. Screw that, I'm putting my armor back on. Uh, I can get my AOTE back, okay. I know I put it in the backpack, That uh, I'm allowed to do that, I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, there we go, we're back. We're back in business, boys. I have armor and I have my weapons and stuff. Good, and I have enchanted tools and things. Let's go, bro. I love haste potion. Yes, I did it! Tier 1. Let's go. Okay, that's a spin. 100,000 mining XP? That's actually nuts, bro. What the hell? Alright, boys. What's it gonna be? It better not be one item rarity. That's gonna be a killer. No way! No way, bro! What is my RNG? What is my RNG? I got it again! Back to back, bro! Back to back? What? What do I even do with it? What do I do with it? I don't know what I want to get rid of. What? <laughs> At this rate, I don't even know what my RNG is. Like, this is literally the second time that I've gotten this modifier back to back. As a result, this led to quite a lengthy discussion with my Twitch chat because some people were saying things like I should remove the Iron Man modifier, while others were saying that I should remove minions disabled or backpacks disabled. After tossing up between various different options, we eventually settled for removing the Iron Man modifier because this would allow me to buy all the talismans I was needing off the bazaar, because now that I had a large accessory bag, I needed to actually start filling it up. Alright, Iron Man is now gone. 
Iron Man's now gone. I can open the bazaar again. Let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna just make sell offers for my mithril. Oh, I have money. Nice. Oh, I know what I'll do. Hold on, hold on. Let me do this before I forget. Oh, I got auctions? What the heck? Bro, I got so much stuff. 140k, 50 of these frags. Yeah, we got this. Guys, sell me unstable frags. Sell me unstable dragon fragments. It's a good idea. You should sell me unstable fragments. Yes, I did it. Okay, buy order for 50. Sick. All right, we're making the helm. We're making the helm. Good. I got an unstable dragon helmet. Let's do some quick enchants. There it is. Cool. What am I missing on this? Just expensive stuff, basically. There we go. We've got full unstable, boys. We've got full unstable. This is a very good armor set to be using, dude. Unstable is very nice. Let's do some... Let's go on a shopping spree real quick. Let's go on a shopping spree. I'm going to pull out, like, a list of missing talismans. And I'm going to try and acquire as many of them as possible. I could get the vaccine talisman. Okay, it's just nine poisonous potatoes. That should be easy. How much damage am I dealing, out of curiosity? Th what? 3,000? I have 91% crit chance with no potions. Holy crap. Bro, we're actually looking really good damage-wise. I could maybe, like, one-tap crypt ghouls now, actually. It's just if I don't crit, then things look bad for us. 3k damage. Bro, unstable armor is so good. Unstable armor is actually so cracked, bro. I actually ran around the graveyard for quite some time here, just killing level 1 zombies trying to get poisonous potatoes. The drop rates of these were surprisingly really bad, though, so I ended up just warping somebody to my lobby and buying the rest off of them. The only other way I could have obtained them would have been by waiting ages to bid on some on the auction house, and realistically, this just wasn't feasible, so I paid a reasonable price for just 7 poisonous potatoes. Here, I have like 100 coins. Okay, I did the trade. Vaccine talisman. Why don't I have the recipe? What? There's a, there's a collection for this? Requires potato 3. Can you, can you craft it? A apparently, there's a collection. No way, guys. Okay, that's one. Let's do the Wood Affinity Talisman. I don't have the recipe for that. I would like to get the recipe for that. Never mind. Wait, do I have clean tools only turned on still? <gasps> I don't! Alright, boys, we're gonna go sweat mode real quick. And just like... This. Oh my god, the efficiency is so good! No way! I have fast mining speed now, bro. We did it. We did it. Wood Affinity Talisman. Easy claps, bro. Wood Affinity Talisman. Let's go. We did it. What's next? <laughs> that was a long grind for one talisman, but these will all be easy from now on. As you can probably imagine, this part of the video was very straightforward. I pulled up my stats on Skycrypt and looked for as many cheap talismans as I could, and then I just went on some crazy shopping spree at the bazaar to buy all of the ingredients necessary. One of my friends was happy enough to just sit in my lobby while I collected all the materials I needed, and I'd trade them over to him so he could craft me my talismans when I wanted them. This isn't the most engaging of footage though, so have a cool montage where you get to watch me spend about one and a half million coins in under a minute. Look at that. Yo, this actually looks pretty good now. We have, we have some talismans. That's really cool. I think I might have to spin for my magic power, but that's worth it. We've made, we've made good progress with this. Yeah, and we still got heaps of space left for more talismans in future. Like, the accessory bag's not gonna get filled up anytime soon. Cool. Shall we check the damage? Let's go, let's check my magic power first. Oh, wow! Okay! Okay, I used to have, like, okay! I had 33 magic power prior to this, and now I have 178. <laughs> wow, that was a 1.8 mil upgrade, roughly? That was really cheap. Okay, I have to spin for this. In fact, I'm really close to spinning a second time. That's how, that's how much magic power I got. I spin every 100. Every 100 magic power is a spin. Please just, like, don't, don't be bad. I don't even know at this rate. Yes! Good! Good, we got something stupid. We got something that doesn't affect us. Perfect! Let's- let's get a move on. Let's check out if there's any better reforges to get. 
So now that I had a lot more magic power to work with, this also meant that I had stronger reforge buffs and some tuning points that I could use. I took the opportunity to head to the Talisman guy to see if there was any way of getting 100% crit chance, and luckily for me, it was very possible. I ended up picking the Warrior Reforge as not only did it give a ton of damage buffs, but also brought my crit chance right up to 98%. So after applying a few tuning points to get it to 100%, my stats were looking really good. Theoretical numbers are boring though, so it was about time I took my tweaked setup to the graveyard for a quick damage test. I was doing 3k before, 3.4 thousand. 4.2, we're, we're looking good, we're looking really good. 4.2k damage, that means that I can actually like one-shot crypt kills now. Watch this guys, die. Yes, 4.5k damage. Oh, that's beautiful. And then if I use my ability, 6.2! Yo, we're looking good, we're looking good now. I can actually fight these guys, they don't like insta-kill me. That's amazing, so now we actually have like a good combat setup. Alright, big progress has been made today, boys. Big progress has been made. There is one more thing that I want to do, though. I'm going to come here, and we're going to get the, the best enchant in the game. And I'm going to request 16 of them. Don't even trip. That'll fill in no time, guys. I want bank 5, because I have bank 5 on my shoes, and, like, they already came like this. So if I can get bank 5 on, like, the leggings or something, that means that I won't lose any money on death, like, ever, without a booster cookie. And it also gives you money on kill now, so it's not even a bad enchant. Like, early game, it's pretty decent. If you look at bank 5. 50% of your coins, yeah, saves 50% of your coins. So with two bank books, it's 100%. And then additionally, enemies drop 2.5 coins when killed. This. There it is. Bank 5 on the legs. Bank 5 on the shoes. Arm is decked out. We got the AOTE, and now we're looking really good. We're looking really, really good. And that was absolutely right. I've managed to reach 100% crit chance without a guard pot. I have no chance of losing coins on death, even without a booster cookie. And I could now comfortably one-shot crypt ghouls, as well as tank a large variety of different mobs. Despite the crazy ups and downs the modifiers on this profile have had to offer, big progress was being made, and my stats were finally shaping up to be strong enough to start tackling bigger and better things in the next episode.